Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. So the first mention we get of that phrase, they were filled, is in Hosea chapter 13, verse 6. Let's start in verse 5. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion. As a leopard, by the way, will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and I will rend the call of their heart. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. Luke 6, verse 7 through 11. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? to save life, or to destroy it. And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness, and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. So the first mention of that word madness is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart, and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. And in context here in Deuteronomy 28, this is referring to the curses coming upon a man who is not hearkening unto the voice of the Lord to do all his commandments. Emphasis on all. This is why in Galatians 3 verse 10 through 12 we read, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Look at John 7 verse 47 through 49. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. So you see the hypocrisy of the Pharisees here. They are the ones who were deceived. They are the ones who don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They are the ones who were under the curse of the law. Because they're not trusting in Christ, they're trusting in themselves. And they do not hear the law, nor do they keep the law. Galatians 4.21 Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? John 7.19 Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? So according to Jesus, nobody keeps the law. Not to perfection. You have to continue in all of the commandments and statutes which we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, This is why we trust in Christ. He is the life. He lived that perfect life that none of us have lived and all of us have fallen short of. This is why we trust in Christ 
who is the fulfilling of the law. He came to fulfill all righteousness, and the Lord is our righteousness. We are to be found in Him, not having our own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is of faith, the faith of Christ. All right, so what about the last mention of the word madness in the Word of God? It takes us to 2 Peter 2, verse 16. Let's start in verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. And what was Balak trying to get Balaam to do? He was trying to curse the children of Israel. He was trying to get them to go back under the curse of of the law when God had blessed the children of Israel. God has blessed us, my friend. We have been blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ. When we put our trust and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are blessed. The blessing of the gospel of Christ. So in Luke 6, 11, the word of God says they were filled with madness. So who is being filled with madness? Well, in context, verse 7 says the scribes and Pharisees watched him, okay? The scribes and Pharisees were filled with madness. All right, moving on. Luke 8, verse 22 through 25. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into his ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. So Luke 8, 23 says, As they sailed, he fell asleep, and they were filled with water. Now compare that with 2 Peter 3, verse 4 through 7, in saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So notice there in Luke 8, 24, they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, there it is, the pattern of two. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Grace, grace, fallen from grace. These are the raging waves. That's why he says the wind and the raging of the water. Okay, foaming out their own shame. They don't want you to trust in Christ. That's why he said, where's your faith? They want you to doubt. They want you to go back under the curse of the law. They don't want you to have full assurance and to know that you have eternal life and that you are sealed with the Holy Ghost unto the day of redemption. So they were filled with water. I believe this is the bitter water which causeth the curse as spoken of in Numbers chapter 5. And this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. So there's your two right there. Master, Master, Amen, Amen. 
And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse. And the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. So this is wormwood. The waters are bitter. This is the law of jealousies. See, the Lord is jealous. Okay, we are married unto Christ. We are dead to the law and married unto Christ. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. This is a trial of our faith. See, all these threes, all these false tongues, they are there for a trial that we have to go through because we are in the valley of decision and we will either choose life and trust in Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life or we will trust in ourselves and we will choose death. Look what John the Baptist said in John 1, 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Okay, this is the water of affliction that we all have to go through. We all have to be baptized with. So this here that John is referring to is the baptism with water. This is not the baptism of the Spirit. Because we receive the Spirit through the hearing of faith when we trust in Jesus Christ and humble ourselves and fall upon the rock and are broken. So there in Luke 8, 23, the Word of God says they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. It takes us to 1 Chronicles 11, verse 17 through 19. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is at the gate. And the three break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but poured it out to the Lord and said, My God forbid it me that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives they brought it. Therefore he would not drink it these things did these three mightiest. So he says there in verse 18 that these three, they took it. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. And notice David would not drink of this water. He knew, he said, oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem. Okay, that's the holy one of Israel. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the word of God. That's the blessed King James Bible. We are not to read these false Bibles. The NIV, the ESV, the New King James Version, okay? Those are the bitter waters that cause the curse. We are not to put our trust in men who want to exalt themselves and want to get you to go back under the curse of the law. No, we receive revelation from our Father in the Word of God. Oh, that one would give me drink of the water. We are to drink waters out of thine own cistern. And the last mention of that word, jeopardy, is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 30. Let's start in verse 27. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest. Remember what John said. He said he came baptizing with water that he may be made manifest to Israel. So he says, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. John 6, 11-13 And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. 
Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. So there in John 6, 13, he says, Therefore they gathered them together. Look at Psalms 140, verse 1 through 3. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. Notice as verse 3. They have sharpened their tongues. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. They've sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Just like in Genesis 3. Yea, hath God said. What did Satan do? He placed the seed of doubt in the mind of mankind and sowed his tares and perverted the word of God and what the Lord had actually spoken. And if you drink this, my friend, this is poison, this is adder's poison is under their lips, then ye shall surely die. Okay, this is not a physical death, this is a spiritual death, this is the second death. In Revelation 16, verse 15 through 16, the word of God says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Okay, a place of crowds. This is the tares being gathered together and men gather them and cast them into the fire okay these are those lips that poison is under they are continually gathered together for war okay therefore they gather them together and i have more on this if you haven't seen the video seven loaves go and check that out i go into a greater detail on these verses continuing on acts 3 Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Verse 10, And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. So this lame man was laid at the gate of the temple daily and he saw John and Peter entering into the temple okay so he was not in the temple look at revelation 11:2 but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and 2 months so we in times past were gentiles we were in the flesh We knew not God. Gentiles know not God. So this lame man hears the word of God. He hears the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he gets saved by the grace of God. And now he enters into the temple. And he says in verse 10, They were filled with wonder and amazement. So those that saw... This miracle happened. They saw this man be healed and enter into the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement. Look at Acts 13, 38 through 41. 
Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Okay, I declare unto you good tidings. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the men that asked, What must we do to do the works of God? He said, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him that he has sent. This is the work that God has done. Okay, All glory goes to Jesus Christ. It is finished. Revelation 17 verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. So he goes on to say, They were filled with wonder and amazement. 1 Peter 3 sits, Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Alright, so the sixth and the final mention of that phrase, they were filled, is found in Acts chapter 13, verse 45. Start in verse 43. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So the Jews, these self-righteous heretics who want to preach a work salvation, they don't want people to get saved. That's why in the book of Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul said that they're contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. He says that the wrath abideth upon them to the uttermost. Okay, and when the Jews saw the multitudes, they saw the multitudes uh, uh, hearing the gospel and getting saved by the grace of God. They were filled with envy. Job 5 verse 2, For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. Proverbs 27 verse 4, Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Isaiah 26 11 through 14, Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemies shall devour them. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. O Lord our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. They are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them, and made all their memory to perish." Remember, Jesus said they knew not the day, the time of their visitation. Ezekiel 35, verse 11 through 14. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, 
and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Thus saith the Lord God, When the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Matthew 27, 17 through 18. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Acts 7, 9 through 10. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him, and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Romans 1, 28-29 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Philippians 1, 15-17 Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. And isn't that sad that some preach Christ of envy and strife, of contention? Remember they said, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in thy name? 1 Timothy 6, 3-5 if any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Titus 3 verse 2 through 5 To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Alright, now let's look at the last mention of that word envy, which is found in James chapter 4, verse 5. Start in verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So I think it's important to define what the word envy means using the word of God so we can have more clarity when we read Acts 13.45 which says, But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Alright, so now let's recap and summarize what we just learned in this video. So we're looking at the phrase, they were filled. That phrase, they were filled, is mentioned six times in the Blessed King James Bible. So to get wisdom, we are counting the number of the beast, which is the number of a man. Six hundred, three score, and six. 
So the first mention of that phrase, they were filled, is in Hosea 13, verse 6. The Word of God says, they were filled, their heart was exalted, they forgot God. Luke 6, 11 says, they were filled with madness and commune one with another what they might do to Jesus. Luke 8, 23 says, they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. John 6, 12 says they were filled, referring to the great company fed with the five barley loaves and two small fishes. Acts 3.10 says they were filled with wonder and amazement. Acts 13.45 says they were filled with envy and contradicted and blasphemed. So I think it's safe to assume that this filling is not a good filling. And I think it gives us more clarity on what's going on in John 6.12 with the great company that's being fed the five barley loaves and two small fishes.